Never thought this would happen. Uh, first thing I've ever owned that's got that logo on it. But the old birds, pretty good shape. I got the door panels out right now because, uh, well, that's what the seat looks like after a steam cleaning. You got about 40 years of farming out of her. Put a new dash pad in it. Fixed up the wiring. Got all the gauges working. This is a little project. There's some janky. Uh, not sure what was going on. Nice. Those are nice. Gonna maybe work them into the final equation, but I uh, feel like that's gotta go. That's gonna lend itself to uh, yeah, that's not right. We don't need that. Yeah, she's a pretty styling old truck, I guess. If that's your thing. This is more my thing. But that's somebody's thing. Uh, had to get the timing right. Do a bunch. There's some craziness that had gone on with the carb. He'd taken the vacuum stuff all off here and... Uh, had built a bracket up here and had one of them lawnmower choke cables running back into the cab there. So we delete kitted all of that. Don't need that. This was not where it needed to be. So it is now. Um, these headers coming off. Got some manifolds for it because these are not the right headers. They fit the engine, but they are, you see how low they are? Uh, they're just not, yeah, I just don't like how low they are. I feel like in a four wheel drive application that they are going to be the first thing to go. So rest of this thing is really nice though. Like, look at, I don't even see a hole, which is not normal for stuff I buy. Usually the stuff I buy gets better fuel mileage than it should because there's not a lot of metal left in the places. But yeah, not a lot of leaks either. It's got one on the engine and I found, well, you always go hunting, right? This truck's an 81, so it would have had factory 16.5s according to the door. Someone did the right thing and made these 17s, which are, yep, way better. But yeah, you do some finding of things going through the doors. So, uh, valve stem seal kit. Uh-oh. Open valve stem seal kit. Oh, maybe replace the bad ones. Not really sure. And then, uh, this here. Rear main seal set. And that number is the right number for... At least it's Felpro stuff. That's nice. But that number is the right number for this engine, which is the 400, the 6.6 .6 liter. Ford's biggest attempt at power in a 1981 pickup truck. These can be replaced with the engine and transmission still in the truck. Because they're the two-piece ones. And there's a little sneakiness you can do to replace them. The question is, is... Because I've never, again, owned a Ford, never been in to one of these. Um, question is, can we get the oil pan down in the head enough to get in there if that's what it needs? Now, we were working on it the other day and my buddy crawled underneath there to do something and said, Hey, look at this. Really leaking down in. I don't know if you can see it. There you go. You can see it right there. That oil filter, I fired it up when we were warming it up to set the timing and it was running oil off the oil filter there. So I'm sneak I got a sneaking suspicion that it might be suffering from the old double oil filter gasket and someone just didn't notice. And then the other thing, there's the old dash, it's just gross. Bye bye. And then someone did so these door panels were painted this light color to match 
the interior because these door panels, I assume the old ones were junk. So I took these and pressure washed the crap out of them. And you can see how the paint just came off. Like this took five minutes. So what that tells me is when they did these, they might have bought the plastic paint because it looks the right color. This will be that, well, if you use the SEM product, which is what I got over here, it'll be this color coat here. And this is light buckskin, which is the right color. I color matched them to, to that. So that's what this interior was. But I feel like they didn't use this which is absolutely fundamental. Because if you don't use that, that stuff is a flexible coating actually, because this plastic moves when it gets uh, warm in the sun and cold in the winter and all that. But you can see the shine here still. And that's not what you want. The reason this stuff isn't coming off is as you can see, it's dulled down. And this I'm surprised came off but like you look up here at this and you look at how dull it is, this stuff should have bonded like crazy, which is how I know they didn't use that adhesion promoter because it just flaked right off. Like the it pressure washer took it off like you were sandblasting it. So yeah, the uh, this is in the way of getting this out. Been too cold, had to order a couple extra pieces. This is way worse than I originally thought. So I just said the easy thing to do is buy the wheel well arc. They're not as cheap as they used to be. I think that was 150 bucks for that piece there. And I only need the back bit of it. But yeah, this year I've cut out the places where it was rusty and discovered the places where there was, you know, just they hid some stuff they shouldn't have hid. So I'm going to clean it all up and get it straightened out you know like up there they did they removed the badging and just did a bondo job where you know it's not that hard to weld some steel in there and make it steel but all in all for an old truck this one's pretty straight but i've been waiting for the weather to warm up because this is going to go outside and all that inside body stuff like all these inner bits where there's rust this is all going to get sandblasted down and then properly treated so it doesn't do that again and uh so this thing's basically down to other than i'm waiting for that panel there uh this thing's basically down to cut out and I'm gonna have to pull it out do some spot blasting and immediately pull it back inside but it's been uh yeah immediately pull it back inside and get it primed right away so it doesn't flash on it flash rust you can see a little bit down here there's surface rust on the corners and stuff but like that's that'll sandblast up really nice and and then just hit it with primer and trying to get this ready to go for paint before a guy has to go farming so i got some time yet if you look outside i don't think we're going today well we could go Harrow some snowballs around maybe, but uh, yeah, I don't think we're going today. So anyway, that's kind of been, that's kind of been what I've been doing for fun. And uh, other than that, feeding cows. But yeah, this thing here, she's, she's pretty good. Pretty excited. We, we call this, we name this truck in honor of uh, uh, Betty White, that's what we call her is Betty, because she uh, she's in pretty good shape for an old girl. And uh, she's a survivor. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm really excited about. This one, I just, I couldn't leave it there. There's, a, there's things, you know, like, look at here. This is an option for Ford. This is an adjustable. If you look close, you'll note this is a shelving bracket that some feller put on there. This is factory. This is this is their factory mirror bracket. And then they had them little kind of 
square little pods that sat up there. This is the factory mounting hole. But the guy had a camper on here, so his solution was get these, get this for a mirror, and then you just pull this bolt out, and you can see he was running it in this hole here. And this is like your go, your tow mirror. Just got to have a wrench. It's not as convenient as 2023. You know, you got to have a wrench, and then it puts it there and move it out. But how the wind doesn't adjust the auto adjust feature i think not sure if the wind does things here um and this was tight i drove this thing home 10 miles which was pretty amazing it had sat for four months the timing was wrong threw a battery in her fired a little fuel down its yap and she kicked off and and uh just drove it home yeah had an exhaust delete attempt to happen on the way home and uh the front tire had a a bad valve stem so we had eight pounds of air over here but it was only a few miles it wasn't a big deal we just cruised on home one one burnout but it stalled because the timing was out but yeah after four months she just fired right off and uh winter time out too and it did it fired right up and so anyway we got the we adjusted this here the distributor and set the timing right so it runs nice Runs happy, but we haven't ran it too much since because on the way home, we also discovered that it was leaking oil pretty good there. So, yeah, I just, I couldn't leave it there. It was sitting in the bushes. It was going to get sad. Really not that bad of rust. I think this is the one spot of rust on the cab, this cab corner, but these old Fords, they're all so square down here. Like my buddy said, it's like... Below the belt line, you can just basically take flat metal and cut it where you need. This is the worst of the rust on the truck. It's this back corner. But they all did this, apparently. Might do something about it. Put a shiny bumper on it on the back. To the, the front bumper is perfect. So, yeah. Anyway. It's going to be fixing on her and replacing stuff and... My kid has a Ford and he thinks we should keep it because he has a Ford and I just, I don't know. It's a nice old truck, really. I mean, if it was a 81 Chevy three quarter ton, I'd probably be sleeping right here. I'd be so excited to find one in this shape. But I'm sure there's some Ford guys out there that'd be, ooh, what do you got there? It's just not, not me. I don't know. Maybe it has to do with what your dad drove when you were a kid. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Yeah, like that bumpers. Someone replaced the headlight doors too at some point. But I think I can do a little shine in here. She's got a few of the old Saskatchewan. Met the neighbor on the gravel road when he was in a hurry to get to town. Probably during harvest. Got a few rock pings in there. Um, yeah, this truck had the factory second battery location. And something I don't know anything about on the Fords. So that, that second battery location, this little fella right here. Power comes here. And then there's this other power wire, which uh, we just taped off to make sure we didn't have sparks occur. Cause a, causing fire. I might not be in love, but I don't want it to burn down. Um, so that's this wire here. And uh, this is like starter relay type thing. So factory camper package where when you wanna charge your camper battery or isolation for camper battery so that you can get her to start all the time. Yeah, don't know. I think that's what it is, but maybe somebody else knows more than I do about that. And the amazing thing is, like, everything works. Not even kidding. Wipers, wiper, washer motor works. We got this needed cleaned out, and the, the, the hose has been removed for weight. You know, better fuel economy. That's apparently the old 400 is, uh, she's a single-digit fuel economy outfit in this configuration. 
But it sounds really good. It roars. Could have something to do with the tiny mufflers. Yeah, there's some. Got the wheel well rest below. Everything's below the trim line, though. And then you reach up in here and feel up in there, and she's uh, pretty solid. Like, there's not even a lot of corrosion on the, the pins that hold the, the trim on. They feel like they're pretty solid in there. You can see this has got the rear. So I might just keep fixing on it. I don't know. Once we got the timing set, we did the right thing, took it out and did a four-wheel drive burnout. And yep, that is uh, for sure. She does that good. So it makes torque. Yeah, project. I guess you could be in the house watching TV. I'd rather do this.